I am drawing. It is drawing day. Uh, I don't know if anyone's watching this, and I'm probably no one. So I'm just talking to myself, just living free. Um, let me know in the chat if you can hear me, because I I have no streaming skills, and I never know if I'm uh, if this thing is on. In fact, it usually ends with me like slurping cups of tea. Um, volubly breaking wind and, and upsetting people. So say hello in the chat. I'll say hello back to you. Ah, ha, 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 hi, Steph. Hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to my stream. Leave your cares behind. Welcome to my stream built with you in mind. Uh, today I am redrawing an old comic, classic style. Uh, to take people through some of my methods. Um, the comic is so old that it has no relevance to the present day. Um, in fact, as I'm sure I'll tell you, I have no idea how I drew it this way in the first place, but you can see the old one. It's from 2007, towards the end of me drawing with a pen and paper. I hope you're doing well, Steph, by the way. Yeah. Hi. Hi, hi. Yes. Hello. Um, so, this comic is from a story called The Great Tackleford Show. There's not much I remember about writing this story. I think it was written very hastily. It doesn't represent any major breakthroughs. It's not, as you'll see, it's drawn, it was quite strange, it's the start of a kind of etiolated period where characters got stretched north towards a point. Um, as you'll see, um, Shelley's head here. It's very pointy and peculiar, but I don't intend reusing any of these drawings. I'm just keeping this here for reference, and I'm going to tell you how I lay this out now. Um, Jared Bissenden says, can you draw me like one of your French girls? Funny enough, this topic came up in my house yesterday, and uh, how one would draw someone like one of their French girls, and you just draw them in the nip wearing some jewels. Uh, but Unfortunately, I've got to concentrate on what I'm doing. I find it very difficult to concentrate while on the stream and talking anyway, so this is going to be um, an exciting experience. I haven't actually bothered to read this comic before uh, starting this stream, before drawing it like one of my French girls, so I'm going to have to take a moment to actually read what it says. I'm going to read it out, uh, giving it the dramatic reading it deserves, certainly dying inside a little as I do. It's your fault we have to co cover the show, Shelley. If you hadn't called Paul a triangle head, now this might be the first reference to triangle head, it was the Christmas party. My spirits are allowed, theoretically. Come on, Mike, we'll make this fun. Three days in the great outdoors. I ate animals, I ate mud, and I ate fresh air. Yeah, it's northern, you see. There's jam too and cake. Buku de cake. And there's a beer tent too. This is a very short comic. This was meant to last a whole day in people's minds. And there's a beer tent. You can do gonzo journalism. Maybe eat a toadstool and sniff some pens too. That's pens, not penis. Uh, which I almost said. I see. Maybe we should bring guns. Just a few to be safe. Well, this is a, a Hunter S. Thompson reference, isn't it? I clearly had something in mind. It's, it's slight. Let's say that. It's a slight effort. It's basically a four-panel strip stretched to the size of a full page, which was pretty much my modus operandi back then. You could easily have done this as a standard newspaper style strip, although you'd have had to have fight to get the words in. Anyway, I'm going to give it the, the full treatment, the uh, the whole nine yards, as they say. Um, what I might do actually first, and if you'll forgive me a second, I'm going to also tweet this out to my Patreon and uh, see if I can get some of those people in here as well. So while I do that, to provide entertainment, I'm just going to talk. I uh, don't know if you enjoy talking. It's like the radio, but worse. But if you've got any questions, please do put them in the chat. Okay. What should I say? Live stream. Live stream now. Give it a bit of, of excitement and then uh, come to YouTube and be entertained. 
all good, nothing bad. And a link to the stream, oh it even turns it blue, who could ask for more? There will be no blue material on this stream. Great. I've done it. Right, let's proceed. Okay, so I'm going to largely keep panelling the same because I don't really want to have to think about um, a new layout. So that's a whole other job. I'm just going to work with what I've got and try and make it a bit more exciting. Make some different decisions. Make the decisions I would make today, not the decisions of 13 years ago. That's, uh, that's the fun of these things. As I say it's a very easy strip. It's a four panel, so I'll just try and make it a bit, a bit busier. A bit more fun, a bit more visually interesting. Not that there's really anything wrong with the old version. I wouldn't draw like this now, but I certainly wouldn't crop people at the top of a panel like that now. But uh, there's plenty to see. So I'm just going to keep the um, speech balloons and throw everything else away, first of all. Ooh, oh, hang on, these start in the middle, don't they? Oh, John. Schoolboy era. Okay. Why are they rotate? I don't use the. Uh, circular marquee very often because I, I'm, it's just not my thing. I'm not going to start from the centre and I'm not going to just angle after fixed. Okay. I do like the localization on Clip Studio. There we go. Look at this. What a pro. Oh no, hang on. Yes. Great. I want you and I want you and I want you and I want you. I want you, and I want you, and I want, oh, whoops, oh no, oh, that was working so well. With your, your um, marquee tool on Clip Studio, you can set it to just add by default, and I'd failed to do that. I've only been using this software for 12 years. There we are. So I select all speech bubbles, invert the art. And then I'll just drop the original art because I've got a copy over here on the right that I can look at for reference. I've got the text which I will make blue so I can ignore it because blue is the colour of ignorance. Okay. I want you. And I want you. Hi Sarah. Hi Steve Jeffrey. Hi Eleanor McGee. Hi Ian Kirk. Hello Timothy Winchester. Hi No No. Is that No No from Ulysses 81? The red robot fella. It's great great to have you here. I hope your career's going okay. Not seeing you on TV much recently. Now I guess I'll start by giving away a trade secret. If I have to draw the same office over and over again now, I don't do it. On the page. I have a 3D model. I don't know if you can see that. It's very much like being in uh, the Unreal Engine, I believe it's known. The Unreal Engine of course is the train on which all video games are built and hosted. It goes round and round the world with all the servers on it. So this is SketchUp Make, which they ironically they don't make anymore. You have to use the web-based version if, if you want a, a new version of this, but um, I don't trust the web. The cyber is too dangerous. I like this old desktop version, so I'm going to keep using it for as long as I can. Uh, anyway, this office, I, I design most of the buildings myself now because I said we can't find ones that do exactly what I want to do, but I used to just go and nick them off Trimble 3D Warehouse. There weren't that many good offices that were appropriate to what I was doing on Trimble Warehouse. So but this one, the Cormorant Office, is the newspaper in Tackleford, and I've used it in many strips from many different angles. Very occasionally it gets employed for something else, but um, what I do, it's, it's not what I'm doing. This isn't um, the way they used to do it back in the 1950s, when Stan and Jack would fire up SketchUp uh, 1955 for a... For a bit of a blast on a you know a Captain America comic pre-Marvel uh, 
instead, I just take a screenshot of the bit I want, and then I use that as the basis for the drawing. I don't just trace it because, frankly, I mean, it's got IMAX from 2004 on it, and some pretty ugly looking towers and some chairs you probably wouldn't want to have to draw over and over again because they're quite baroque. Baroque? Baroque. Anyway, cyber architecture. Yes, that's right, Steph. Cyber architecture. Okay, so I need for the first panel, I need, well, they're just walking into the office. So I really just need a doorway. In fact, I'll be honest with you, you don't really need your model for this. I would just draw a doorway. It seems pointless to use my 3D model for this. So I've got a sketch pen, which is quite fat. And, um, but as you can see, I've, um, I've not left any headroom in the original panel. So doors, you, in making the sort of comics I do, you end up drawing a lot of doors. I draw so many doors, and I reckon I'd never properly looked at what a door actually looked like until about 10 years into drawing comics. But the more you look at it, the more interesting doors become. This is a lie, doors aren't interesting. So, let's just, right, I'm still using the circle marquee, that's no good to me. Now, like I said, this isn't a very interesting composition in the original. The, the character acting is doing all the work, and I think I can probably do this better. How do you draw Mike? He's got rather quite round shoulders because he's always put upon. <sighs> he's he's a bit like later in the comic. Mike persists for years and years as a character who works at the newspaper. He's the kind of old lag who can never leave. Um, He's been there too long, really. He's missed his chance to go national. And um, given the state of the news media, he's probably never going to get to go national. But I liked his um, his cheekbones, which I think, I'm trying to think who he was based on. He's meant to be a bit of a sort of Peter Venkman figure, irascible kind of young Bill Murray, although I have to say that my decision to make people look like somebody early on really just gave me a starting point, because I couldn't draw anybody who looked like anybody. But yeah, so, you're saying it's our fault, it's your fault we have to cover the show, Shelley. If you haven't called... Oh, I'd better make him a bit angry about this. My pencils are, are not super precise. I think we established this on a previous stream, because if you're drawing digitally, really, you only need to do as much as you are comfortable with in terms of being positional. I don't need a absolutely perfect drawing because I'm comfortable enough with the uh, tools to be able to draw the characters when every line not be perfect and sort of know I'm going in the right place. Again, because I draw these characters a lot. And then what's Shelley saying? It was a Christmas party. High spirits are allowed. Now she looks quite crabby. Shelley is, you know, it's kind of wrong. Shelley isn't, doesn't really get crabby. That's a bit of a hangover. A bit of a hangover from uh, the characters being a little too generic. She would, she's quite, she does not give a flying toss what anyone thinks. She's living in her own universe completely. She defines her own universe, and if she gets the sack, she actually doesn't really care, because she always falls on her feet, except for the brief periods of um, poverty, and even those are just part of life's rich tapestry. She doesn't care that she calls uh, Paula Triangle Head. She thinks it's sort of affectionate, even though obviously it's just rude. And she's wearing this uh, dress, which is a kind of empire line thing, which again, very much of its time, I don't know if I should design her a new outfit for... Who wants me to design her a new outfit? It is... Uh, I'll just answer some questions while someone tells me whether I should design her a new outfit or just stick with the original. Let's ask... Let's see... Yes, I am... Eleanor McGee, I am revisiting the continued suffering of Mike Savage. Um, the character can't really appear anymore. So uh, I, I thought it would be nice to spend some time with him. 
It, and um, yes, it is the story with Shelley's jam vendor. Jam, I, I mean, as a jam liker myself, I wouldn't say I was. I abuse it. I'm certainly a weekend ch jam eater now, a chipper, you know, a bit like uh, Damon Albarn and the old, uh, the old substances. That's a that's allegedly. And yeah, so on on for the newest fash. Right, well, I'll show you where I get the newest fashion from. You'll enjoy this. I use a site called Lookbook, where people post their outfits of the day. Um, and I follow... I'm not putting this up on the screen, because um, you'll learn all the secrets of all the users that I have for the outfits, but I have different users on Lookbook for different... Um, characters and different moods of characters. So let's find a good Shelley outfit and I'll just post it up. There's a brilliant blogger called Blue Avenue and her outfits are really, oh, now you're gonna like this. You're gonna like this a lot. I'm gonna save this off and then um, I'll put it in my, sub view and you can see what I'm up to. Uh, open. All right, so here we go. I don't know if you can see this. This lady has some great outfits, and they're always stealable for Shelley. They're not all her outfits are not appropriate for Shelley. Sometimes she's got a kind of woodland furs kind of deal that um, is not is not right. But in terms of like, if she, especially when Shelley's on one of her author tours. And you need something that's a bit like I'm out and about. It was the Christmas party, actually. She'd be like rolling her eyes up as if to say, Oh, these things happen. Oh, for sure. That's it. That's the kind of action we're looking for here. The kind of hands down. Oh, guys, honestly. Then, obviously, there's a lot of space here, a lot of space free. So I like to show that there's something going on in the uh, in the office next door that is not just dead space. And well, I always used to like filing cabinets. Filing cabinets are a really good way of filling up a bit of space. And if I, I drew Barry, Shelley's agent's office the other day, and I put a load of filing cabinets in there, and I don't know. If Offices still have filing cabinets in them. I can't imagine people really need them in the digital era. Maybe if you're in a legacy industry, like barrels, then maybe. Anyway, yes. Yeah, so we've got we've got an option opportunity here for a bit more fun. So Shelley says, "It's, oh, it's a Christmas party. High spirits are allowed." And then what I would tend to do now would be break the comic beat. So I would split that, and then you could have a, a fun close-up. I didn't do a, I never did a close-up before up 2010. It was very rare. So yes, yeah, so she she'd have a moment where she doubts her sort of mad reality. She'd realise that what's coming out of her mouth is effectively nonsense. You know, if you can't make your own mad reality, why are you in the game? I say. Maybe you're a cartoon character, and not a civil servant. Although there are stories where Shelley is a civil servant. Okay. So that's probably all you need for that. And then, well, I've made a pen that you can tilt on its side and get a nice fat line without having to think about it. So. I would attempt to shade it a little bit. So there we are. That's the first two panels done. Not too many questions to ask. I like to clean up my lines as I go. I don't like to leave um, dead space, or rather crossover space, if I can avoid it. So I need to think about how this material falls, because it wouldn't sort of bag out a little bit at the front. I've had to come to terms um, the last year or so with 
flares coming back for years and years and years. Like, I, you know, the flare was the trouser. In fact, I was watching an episode of The Shield at lunchtime, and people in LA all had their sort of bell bottoms and boot cut trousers, and then they just went. Around 2005, they died. There were no more of those. And um, you couldn't draw a flare anymore. It dated you instantly. But now they're back, 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 and sort of coexist with the previous generation. Although, I mean, skinny jeans, I think, are pretty much dead. But then I have to decide which characters can afford new trousers and which ones are still having to wear their old wardrobe. Like in Steeple, Maggie could not afford to go and buy a, a new wardrobe of fun clothes. So she's going to have to wear her sort of skinny jeans with a hundred holes in them until something happens. All right, it's time to return to the young... I'm just going to save this, actually, because this is quite good. Desktop. My desktop's full of screenshots. Can you tell? All I do is take screenshots all day of... Um, 3D models, so you're about to find out what we call this, Stram. I'll never find that again. Great. Right, back to the young architecture. The young architecturalists of uh, East England. Right. Actually, the only problem is I can't see what I'm trying to make a panel like. Because um, I've got it all on the screen to show you. Alright, so Mike sits back down at his desk, Shelley sits down next to him. Right. So yeah, desks, I mean desks, I, how many desks and tables have I had to draw over the years? And I've proved that I can draw a desk now, I don't have to draw any more desks. I've done enough. So we'll do it in this corner. We'll just take this wall out so we can actually see what we're doing. Mike wants to be sitting forward, so uh, I don't think he's grouped in two. So I'll just, just you know, it's it's fairly very recent that I'm actually confident enough to use SketchUp on stream because I was so bad at it I could barely rotate something correctly the first time. I, was, I still struggle a little bit to keep things on a on a plane. Okay. So you're just looking to get a bit of excitement into the angle. Again, like dynamism was always one of my issues. Didn't really know how to keep a panel dynamic, but with SketchUp you can prompt an angle or just use it as a compositional aid. Like the field of view here is 35 degrees, which is quite flat. If you wanted to make something really exciting, too exciting, but this is just for the sake of argument, you could go something like this, you know, like real dynamic angles. I mean, that's pretty dynamic for an office. And you can see the ceiling. It's too dynamic because, I mean, it's so extruded that it looks ridiculous. But you take my point. All right, so I'll leave it something like that. We've got plenty of ceiling where you're going to probably have speech bubbles anyway. So I take a big screenshot, give myself plenty of spare. Then drop that into Clip Studio. And it isn't always right the first time. But if you get it wrong, you get it wrong. You've still saved yourself time and probably given yourself something, something that looks more interesting. But sometimes what I do doesn't always make sense when I try and work with it. All right, so then I can set this to just lines. You can trace it effectively, just do a sort of line trace on it. Then I rasterize it and make it a multiply layer. I've got an action to do that that I've set up. Then I set it to 50% because obviously it's quite dark. And then it sort of suggests the composition. But if you see in the original comic, Mike's sitting straight forward and Shelley's sitting there looking at him. Now I can't, with the angle of this chair, so I could change the chair, that's not an issue. I don't have to stick with the lines that are there. But the, re the realism of this, the realism of these lines demands that I 
think more carefully about Mike's composition because every part of him has to effectively correspond in a 3D sense with that image, even if I tweak it and mess about with it, which I will do in a second. It still has to effectively be right. I'm going to just narrow it a little bit. Oops. Keep your layers in order, John. Otherwise you'll never find them later. Then just narrow it a little bit. Actually, even better. What I sometimes do, because you don't want it to be too correct, I do a mesh transformation. I just warp it a little bit to get the bits of the... Oh, because obviously my drawings are quite wobbly. And I don't want them to be super sharp and super straight. So I'll monkey around with them a little bit. Obviously I'll ink this and it gets even more wobbly. Okay. Right, so that's how I would use one of my set model setups. And then Mike's just hang dog. I don't remember why he was so averse to going to the Great Tackleford show because it actually did. It's three days outside. You know, it's better than sitting in the flipping cormorant office. But I'd um, I'd make him a bit, a bit more sort of slumped. He's just really, really miserable. And he's he is a little bit paunchy, so you can use that to your advantage. So, there we go. That makes for a sort of funnier shot. And you can kind of have his tie hanging over his paunch. Remember, good posture is really important when you're in the office. Don't, don't take this as an example of, of what you should do. So, hopefully you can see how that's shaping up. Got his uh, rolled up sleeves. It's funny how many offices I've drawn given how long it is since I've worked in an office. It's very rare I get to go into an office, and when I do, it's nothing like I remember it, obviously, because I, I last worked in a proper office day in, day out in 2003. You know, they've got everything now cooker taps, uh, virtual reality. Everything else. So that looks pretty good. Then Shelley has perched herself on the desk. Now, again, we've got to be somewhat cognizant of this is the um, horizon line. So Shelley realizes here she, she has gone a little bit too far. So she's going to have to manifest concern. Interesting, there's one panel here, she's got lips. Like, for years and years I didn't draw lips. With the kid characters that you didn't really want to, I sort of simplified the character models for bad machinery and then that got into other things. But this is actually quite a difficult angle to get right without it being faintly obscene. So that's, uh, he's got to experiment and feel it out. Actually, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. What I do when I've got two characters right next to each other is make another draft layer so that if I have to move one a little bit. So yeah, because she's sort of cre if you can imagine she's creased like this. The panel this is here. It's quite it's quite uh it's quite a tough ask to get right. Now I've, I've self solved one problem with my sub view because she's wearing those large trousers so that means I don't have to get the legs as right as I did back in 2007. But that is a hard panel. That's a hard ask. You've got to think about the shoulders. It's actually not that different. I think that might have been the only way I could do it because that's quite hard. That's, that's a 
greater level of difficulty than I would normally have attempted back then when I was in like pencil and paper ways. So yeah, you can see that's it's not super easy. Um, shoes is the slave for art of war. They just oh I see they're the heels. So, this is, but no, no, this is pretty loose and you couldn't leave it like this or I couldn't leave it like this for a finished version. I have to know what's going on otherwise you just end up, you, you tell yourself lies because you go to, if you tell yourself lies in your pencils, you go to ink and you're in so much trouble that you end up having to redraw the whole panel because you've inked it three times, you don't like it. And no matter how you change the pencils, you're so frustrated that you might as well just give up for the day. So you've got to, you've got to have pencils that tell the truth. So I think she'd be, she'd be optimistic. She's concerned in the original, but I think she'd be more optimistic. I think that's more of a sort of shelly. She would be smiling about it. She'd be like, come on, Mike. You know, she's a bully and this is Jennifer. Style. I do have to warn you that I've made a cardinal error here. I'm talking quite a lot and I've only got a small glass of water. I think I should really have had a pint. How would these, this collar work? It's much easier. Right, those are about good enough as drawings go. Shelley's head might be a bit thick. The nice thing about spotting that someone's head is too big and knowing that you have a tendency to draw a too big head is you can always shrink it a bit. It's usually a, a matter of 5% wrong. That's my, that's my usual barrier. Okay, so then clean this up, take out this with the lasso. This. And we've got a bit of clarity. Then I'll just finish up the background. I don't worry too much about the backgrounds and one, if I can see the perspective lines. I don't worry too much about the, the backgrounds because I'm drawn enough offices that I can fill the walls up with generic pin boards and management graphs and stuff. But it leaves you a little more time to have fun at the end. But I do like to make sure that the ceiling looks like what it's meant to be in. That's about right for that. Maybe put some windows on. Yeah, I've drawn a lot of vertical blinds in my time as well. Something like that. And then, as I say, these old computers and stuff will be given a, a handsome new look. I'm just looking here. Actually, it's Shelley's hand actually on the desk. No, of course it isn't. So again, I don't worry too much about hands being perfect because I can can marshal my way around a hand. As long as we're sort of we're virtually there. No, we've not we've not told any fibs about the, what the characters actually look like or what they do. No, I don't like that. It's still trouble. I think she she's supporting herself with this one. So this one's probably more like that. You might say, yeah, and you know, you saved yourself from having to draw a hand. Well, you, you know, I know if I've cheated. Great, that'll do. We'll see if, if that actually works in the inking. It might, it might not. Um, 
I took a brief break to read the chat, that's my treat. Got to be able to muster out a modicum of self-restraint. <sighs> wow, it's all going off, I'm going to go backwards. Got to go backwards to go forwards sometimes. Mark Ellaby says, is this doom? Um, no, Mark. It's my drawing strip. Dragon Mes Mesmer says, draw it sitting on the floor angles. Well, that's that's not a question, is it? Um, hello, Mark. Hello, Steve. It's, yeah. Are you left-handed, John? You have Clip Studio flip the same way I do. No. In fact, I think that um, left-handers left are very dangerous people. Count Affordable says, I now deeply want to see your Esther lookbook. Well, actually, I don't have an Esther lookbook. Um, to design Esther's unique style, I used a blog um, by a woman called Sarah Elizabeth. It's called Mademoiselle Ghoul. And I had a lot of good Esther outfits from there. But obviously, Max Sarin was in charge of Esther's look for most of the last five years. So Max is the one you would have to go to to find out the secrets of Esther's wardrobe. Ian Kirk says, we have a lot of invoices and purchase orders in cabinets. Unhappy face. Only unhappy because they're safe. Safe from any kind of hard drive crash. Um, Doc Spengler 753 says, they only exist if people don't feel like cleaning them out. Well, that's true as well, of course. Um, I did do a comic, you may remember it, by night, where um, someone threw a load of filing cabinets out of a window. That was, that was really me working through my own issues with filing cabinets. Uh, well, does anybody have any questions before I start the next panel? Because the next panel is a doozy. And by doozy, I mean pretty similar to the previous one, so I'm going to have to think of something new to do with it. No, while you're thinking of a question, let me have a drink. Oh, oh. Oh, tastes good. Water, it's out of the tap. Mm. Barely costs anything. Uh, at what point in Scary Go Round did Shelley's characterizations settle on good natured chaos agent? Oh, oh boy, that's a good question. Well, she, she sort of went through different levels of flibberty gibbet until I kind of leveled her out. I mean, she's pretty out of control by the last Scary Go Round comics, and I had to kind of wind her back. Because she'd gone a bit too far when she went to Atlantis. That's she's gone too far in that story. I, I, I'm not terribly consistent. But then when Bad Machinery starts and she's not in the comic for ages, ages and ages. I, you know, until I did like Murder She Writes. Um, I sort of straightened her out in my head, worked out what sort of person she was. Um, so I would say, yeah, once Bad Machinery starts, that's when her personality actually becomes consistent. Uh, do you ever have scenes during bed that you have a journal by your bed to write down so you don't forget? Um, I used to have it, but I've developed my writing brain in such a way that I sort of know when things are going to arrive. And often I can um, sort of predict. You know, if I decide to start thinking about a new story, stuff will start to come out. I used to have like aqua notes in the shower so I could write in the shower because I often would have ideas then, but now I've sort of moved beyond that into a weird new phase where it arrives like a FedEx delivery, and I just have to take dictation. It's usually, I sort of know, if I've got a few hours free, and the story is to be written, then uh, I've just got, I'm gonna, it's going to come at some point. It's a weird situation, because it can sometimes last days, waiting for the delivery. What became of Comrade Bat? Uh, given to a bat sanctuary. Because she can't keep a bat at home. Um, Ryan becomes much more interested in bat conservation. You know, he's a deadhead basically in Scary Go Round, but by bat machinery he's become responsible and um, he understands that you can't just keep a bat in your house. I think we've all learned over the last year that you can't just keep a bat in your house and kiss it and stuff. That's wrong. But uh, I, was, I was well ahead of the game on that one. Um, right. These two panels. Okay, next panel. This panel's very tall. 
I have idea time. I do have idea time. Yes, ideas time. It's very important. You have to leave space in your schedule for when your idea is going to come out. Or be ready, if you don't have a huge amount of time, for times when you are at rest, i.e. in the shower or washing up or doing laundry, just to be able to jot them down, because they can come fast out of nowhere. Right, okay, next panel. Panel, those two panels are very, I mean, God, I used to draw everybody the same size in every panel, but I prefer something a, a bit more varied now. We've, we've had a panel of at quite a distance, we've had a little mini close-up, we've had a mid-shot, so really we should have, and this one's quite a deep, dynamic panel. I just don't think he should be sitting at the desk again, I think he's going to have to get up otherwise this is going to be a boring pair of panels next to each other. I mean, there's no reason things shouldn't be boring, but let's try and give, give people their money's worth at the very least. Oh, which means we have to go back to the Young Architects Convention and, and begin to move towards the kitchen. Now, Mike's on the left-hand side of the panel, isn't he? And there's no doing anything about that. You <laughs> would think. But um, I can swap these speech bubbles around if I want to. In fact, it's probably a better. You shouldn't really swap characters' um, positions if you can avoid it without um, showing a sort of line of action. Now, quite what the line of action is here when they're just supine. I'm not sure, they're not moving. So, I guess Mike really just has to lurch forward from his chair, sort of like this. This isn't going to be the final drawing, I don't think. But he has to sort of lurch forward. And then Shelley has to kind of extract herself from the desk. Oh, top-down angle though, I'm asking for trouble here. This is not going to be fun. I mean, you couldn't do that. You're just making an awful situation for yourself. But I like the zombie arms in the first panel, and I like Mike's sort of awful recumbence here. So I, I just need to move Mike forward towards the coffee machine. Right, well, we'll see what we can do. Let's see if we can get him on the move. Yeah, like, I didn't used to think about movement. In comics during this era, that I probably didn't. I, I did use to thumbnail them, I think, in 2007. God, I might not have done, you know, I might just have written down the dialogue and then just kind of made it up. There's nothing about this layout on the original that says that I ever did thumbnails. Uh, 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 so, we just need this. This was the original angle, so now I just need Mike lurching. This direction. Oh wow, look at that. Of course. Because that's the retaining wall. So one thing since I've started to make comics more dynamic and more interesting as I've learned more things is that I often end up having to draw people from behind so I can show where they're going. Which means you end up drawing a lot of bottoms. And I'm really worried that people are gonna think I'm doing this because I've suddenly just got really into drawing people's bottoms, but I haven't. To be honest with you, I think it's happening too much, but it gives you so many more options when people start walking away from you, but you've got, you know, 100% more angles to draw things from. So, I'm gonna have them going away from us as a treat. <laughs> So again, we get quite a lot of ceiling here. Not exactly sure how this is going to work. Dutch angle? Oh, Dutch angle. What's a, what is a Dutch angle? 30 degrees? I just, want, I just want my sort of lurching motion. Um, rasterizing. Oh no, don't. Outline. Rasterizing draft. 
Now, I don't know how many web comics artists are thinking about Dutch angles on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I'll tell you how many are. Probably not many more than 60%. No. You go on Webtoon looking for a Dutch angle, you're going to come up short. However, you know, the old lags, Schlock Mercenary, he's, he's probably got a Dutch angle, Howard. So, Mike continues to lurch away. He's getting, there's something about Shelley who just drains his energy. She's just, she's, her good vibes just make him feel worse. I hate animals. I hate fresh air. I hate how the Wacom driver seems to die constantly. Come on, come back. Come back to me. I'll tell you what did used to work better in 2007. The Cintiq drivers. Come on. Ugh. I'm getting no movement. Yes, it's back. That's right. Who knows why that no longer works properly anymore, but it does conk out about three times a day before coming back. So Mike's heading for the break room. And Shelley's going to be coming after him. On his heels like the devil. to think about. How's she coming after him? Is she, how close to him is she? How, how in his personal space? I don't want to lose too much of Mike with too big a Shelley. No, that's not working, is it? Yeah, like, in this era, she just winds people up. She, can't, she really gets in their space. Flares and it's a coat on, so it gives me a bit of room to manoeuvre. Yeah, maybe Mike needs to be smaller. I, mean, I, I don't know if that's a good pun or not. Probably go go north a bit, move everybody up. Again, there's a, there's infinite room for put and take and finesse in Clip Studio. So if you, if half your composition's right, but something's a bit wrong, like this is obviously quite empty as well at the moment because there's no. Um, There's nobody else in the office. I don't like a, a bear, a bear in this space, but I'm not exactly sure what Shelley's feet would be doing at the moment. I'm in all sorts of trouble. This is a difficult angle. This is a difficult angle when you've not got anyone watching. That's more like it. A playful foot. There we go. That's it. Now we are. All right. So this again, this background that I've used is pretty simple has very little personality, so you kind of need to push a bit of action and life into it. Otherwise you're just going to, it's going to look like a wireframe and a video game. Okay, nice ceiling. 
think a, one of these um, polystyrene tile ceilings is always sort of a hallmark of um, the cormorant, which is you know, quite a run-down local newspaper. And then, oops, ideally, you want this to, again, you're going to have to improvise in your background characters, but just someone coming out with a mug. And you can always, um, I like the idea that people are always watching as well. Although I have to have a tendency to draw somebody into the, um, the corner of a panel and not quite give it enough. is the edge of the banister. Don't worry about that. And I like to, now, now it takes, because <laughs> I have to draw the floor more than I used to. I need to just remind myself that people have to be in contact with the floor. They shouldn't just be floating near a sort of plane. And again, when you're a lazy artist like me and you don't put a huge amount of uh, shadow and things like that in, you do need to make sure that people look like they're in contact with what they're in, what they're standing on. Otherwise, they, you know, the less you do, the more they're going to look like they're just floating. Okay. So, he's not got his hand out, so that means that the break room door is open. And then the final panel, and some would say the most problematic, is this one by the coffee machine. Again, God, I wonder if a coffee machine like that still exists. There used to be one in Victoria Station in Manchester, but it's a long time since I've been to Victoria Station in Manchester, and I can't say for sure that that coffee machine is still there. Again, please, if you have any questions or technical questions related to drawing in Clip Studio, put them in the chat. I'll do my best to answer them. Again, no promises of the correct answer, but I'll try. So I don't think I need to use my model for the break room. In fact, I don't think there is a break room on the office model. But um, I may just echo the staging of the top panel. Could use the perspective tools. Oh, do you want to see me use the perspective tools? Well, oh, just imagine. Clip Studio has perspective tools. Real tree. Everybody love them. There's uh, there's this. There's yeah. There's that one point perspective. Two two point perspective. Th three point perspective. Let's see what we can do. This might not work. Yeah, it does. So, yeah, you've got the benefit of the perspective tools. I'm not really doing this correctly. Oh, no, this is the sort of trouble I used to get myself into back then. These wide panels. I'm not, I'm not having perspective tools running. There's no point. It doesn't help me. So, Although I do like to use a 3D model to help me out, I also think there's no shame in mixing up some slightly wonky personal perspective. The personal perspective, I would say, is about the same sort of perspective you have in a car park when somebody's just opened their door into the side of your car. That kind of perspective, you know, it's, it's shoddy. It doesn't really work. It's, um, it's a poor representation of what's actually going on based on just your feeling in the moment. And what you choose to do with, with that will give you some interesting results that you might not have otherwise expected. But you must be careful. So, but yeah, it's just a wide panel. See what you could pretend you're at the movies. You could just do whatever you want. Okay, hang on, hang on, there's some comments. What is a Clip Studio? No, no, it is Clip Studio. That's C L I P. 
It's a Japanese um, illustration package designed for drawing manga and doing odd bits of illustration and animation. Um, it's been around for a long time. It used to be called Manga Studio when I first started. Um, I don't remember why it's called Clip Studio now. I think the characters in the name, the uh, what you read as Karipu in Japanese, but I forget. Anyway, it's inexpensive in its um, in its basic form and good enough for anyone to get started with. I think it's on, on half price sale this week. It's $25. Eleanor McGee says, I regret to report those machines are still about. Ours offers a particularly horrible instant tomato soup. Yes, machine soup. This topic comes up quite often whenever I'm drawn back into the world of vending. It's the uh, soup in our machines at school, um, which was a, a sort of quasi-vegetable. Quasi I mean, I don't know if any of the things in it were, had ever been vegetables. Um, Mark, LB says, let's get wild, but he doesn't elaborate on that. Wild but safe, Mark. Wild but safe. No, he says, does it make you draw from right to left? That sounds, that sounds like a loaded question that I'm not answering. I don't really remember what a vending machine looks like. I'm going to look at some, what we professionals call reference. I've already done it once. Uh, drinks vending machine. I type into a pro into a website called Google Images, and I find something looks sort of appropriate. Oh, oh! Now this is just right. This is what a modern one of these looks like. Yes, it's all coming back to me now. Oh, it's for sale on eBay as well. One hundred ninety nine pounds. If only you could see this. Well, I'm going to paste it in, so you will see it in a moment. Oh no, eBay, I don't think I can right click to save the image. Oh, disaster. I'm going to have to do a, a screen grab. Yes, victory. It's, it's mine. I'm going to stick it in sub view. Here it is. Look at this vending machine. What a flipping beauty. This, this is what everybody wants. Okay, so. And as soon as you put a real world object in your uh, comic, you've immediately lent it an air of class and distinction. All of a sudden, people are looking at you like you know what you're doing. Hey, that's a real coffee machine. I recognise that from the world. And people love recognising things. You should never forget that. Now, I have, of course, got to make sure that... Um, oh, this is a weird old machine, actually, because where's the cup pop out? Oh, it's like a desktop one. I want a freestander. I'm going to have to make a hole for the cup to pop out here. Oh, there she drinks. Milk, wine, toast, juice, dust, all the favourites. And the cup would come out here. And vend here. So, I need space for Shelley and space for Mike. To actually, I'm not making full use of the available space here. I can move these speech balloons. I can actually find which layer I left them on. <laughs> oh dear. Not that one. That one. Let's just give myself a bit, a bit more space. our drinks machine a little bit. Because this is this is dead space here. We, we shouldn't really leave it dead, if possible. Uh, no, no. How how would a drawing program be geared specifically towards drawing manga easy? It makes drawing panels easy natural feeling pens uh, geared towards artwork that's black and white for other people to colour for you. I think that that is the answer. Um, but yeah, like, you know, there's lots of things in your workflow as a comics artist that your average illustrator won't, doesn't ever think about uh, that are boring and repetitive and Clip Studio makes all of those very easy. Uh, 
it's a more pleasant experience to draw in than Photoshop for sure. Um, and also there are plenty of other drawing programs that are fun to draw in, things like Procreate on the iPad, but making panels is a lot faffier and once you're used to it on uh, Clip Studio it's actually quite hard to go back to some of the other apps that don't have all that functionality built in. Any magic to coming up with fake brand names when you do put in real world things? Uh, no, I usually just misuse names of um, companies. I've started using Amstrad a lot, which is the um, old 1980s computer firm um, run by Sir Alan Sugar off The Apprentice. Um, I started putting Amstrad on things like tights and mugs and head scratches and things like that. Um, Lottie wears a, a pair of leggings, which if you look carefully at the waistband, says Amstrad all the way around it. Um, the computers, like a Apple doesn't, well Apple does exist in um, in Scary Go Round comics, but it, it's not the premier technology company, because so that's Zambian, but I came up with that with my friend Joe List when we were making a podcast. We were just talking about a computer that just had one button on it, and it was the Zambian. So that's where Zambian originally comes from, I don't know if Joe or I originally came up with it. I think I'd just been reading about Zambia. You just take any, anything you've got really. Okay, so Mike's going for the cup. And again, I mean, there's not really any other way to do this last panel here, other than what it is, because it's, it's very basic. I wouldn't, if I was not talking while I was doing this, I might think about just a completely different way of of you know laying it out, I've just pretty much done what was in the original panel. But um, again, like a widescreen panel like that, I'm not allowed to get away with things like that anymore. With just two people standing around on an A4 page, I'd have to make something be going on. I'd, I'd have to force some interest into it. In any case, as it stands, I'm gonna just make it a slightly better drawn version of what it was. I think. Well, that might actually not be possible. Now when I look at it, I'm really trapped in this thing. Because that cup's quite big. Yeah, sometimes there's only so much you can do. I just want there to be a little bit of hesitancy in his hand, which there is in the original as well, which is my own fear of the hot drink from the vending machine. Just how hot will it be? You know. Ideally, not scalding temperature, but these things are sometimes not super well maintained and, and may be able to get water up to sort of levels at which it becomes plasma. So you do have to be very careful. Also, he's delivering a line of dialogue to Shelley. So he's kind of looking back, I think. Go another bottom, I told you. Constant recourse to the gluteus maximus just because it makes for a more interesting angle of action for, for one character to be facing away from the, from the camera, so to speak, or the viewer. That's a quiet one. Do, do, do. Royalty free personal song. Do sing in a song, royalty free. It's not public domain though if you want to sing it. Okay, that's better. James Churchill says, I love all the silly Amstrad tat. Yeah, me too. Uh, I don't know if you know this, James, but Amstrad, the company, as was, was bought by Sky. And all Sky Q boxes are made by Amstrad. So Amstrad are in more homes now than they ever were. Amstrad, inescapable. Now this last line is delivered very flat in the original comic for Shelley, and there's a beer tent you can do gonzo journalism. I think she probably I think there's meant to be some heavy irony here that I didn't really uh, deliver in the original. So how do you draw a character and deliver some? He heavy irony. <laughs> I don't know. 
Perhaps just close your eyes. You can sort of go for this kind of Alexis from um, Alexis from Schitt's Creek kind of glibness here. You know, just as I say, just words just coming out. Don't really matter what they are. Not really thinking about it. Why has Shelley got a coat on in the office? How did this situation happen? Come on, take your coat off, mate. If you stay. And here, the kind of um, intimate gesture between friends that is frowned upon by HR. Do, do, do. Shelley's a little bit big there. And we've just got to decide what make this coffee machine is. I don't think it can be Amstrad. Which company could make a coffee machine but doesn't? Lenovo. Company that bought IBM's PC business. Lenovo. And some beans. Mm -mm -mm. When I want coffee, I drink Lenovo. They don't just vent. They roast. Okay. Not cafe, yes. Right, let's look at these next to each other. Let's, oh, again, there's a bit of dead space here. But I'm not sure it shouldn't just be a door. I'd, I'd put a coat rack here, but it seems a little unnecessary. However, I do think there would be a worktop here. A little bit of interest outside the door. I think it's just the suggestion of a window. Right, there you go, side by side. What have we learned? Very little. I made one panel more interesting by breaking it up because I wasn't getting my money's worth out of it. This panel here, panel two, no, it's three now. There's absolutely no guarantee that that one will link correctly. I'm going to link that one and then that will be the, the end of this little experiment, I think. But I'll link it to see if it, it actually works. And panel four, just let's really admit that there's a three dimensional world. And panel five, that, you know, life gives you lemons, mate. Weak lemon drink. It's not too bad. It'll do. Is it perfect? Far from it, but it'll do. And of course, Lenovo make coffee now. <laughs> Hang on, let's read the notes before I ink this panel. Passive aggressive notes about washing up. Yeah, well, you can put those things on the end, but in the end, the little background Easter eggs, ideally, Ideally, it should be legible at screen size. And I have a feeling if I were to do that, there's nowhere to really to put it. I might try one. Okay, let's try it. Have a go at inking this panel. Let's see if we can make it look decent. I usually knock the um, pencils back to 50% just to make it inking a little more pleasant. Again, if it, like I said, I'll probably be going about another sort of 20 minutes. So if anyone has any questions, stick them in the chat and I'll do my best to answer them for you. I've got no questions. That's fine. I expect nothing from you. It's nice of you to show up. I'm not the world's tidiest inker. Tidier than I was. But, um,
there's really not much to say about it, you know, I'm not tracing. But the weight of the um, artwork shifted gradually over the years from the, the pencils needing to be perfect to the, the inks being where the work are done, although it's, it's, it's vacillated backwards and forwards. I look at some of my really early um, digital pencils and there's barely anything there and I've done a huge amount of work in the inks but then I look a few years later and the, the pencils are very carefully done so I think it's just uh, endlessly uh, shifting a desert of drawing aspiration. You always like to get your hairs on an arm. I think that's really critical. That you establish how hairy someone's arms are. I mean, this is hard. This kind of paunchy slump doesn't always make things easy for you. And again, you look at the, sometimes the size of the head is the question. Sometimes I, I do have a tendency just to draw a head slightly too big and have to squish it down. This is a difficult angle with a lot of foreshortening on it in this complicated chair. And this this is one of the angles that I hate, actually. I wouldn't normally make myself draw it. Again, it's just a, it's a challenge on camera. Is the um, knee directly towards the, um, the viewer? It's a hard, it's a hard angle to um, sell. It is obviously, it's, a, it's, it's undynamic and uh, incredibly foreshortened. It's, you know, you're trying to indicate some sort of flow here. And it's not terribly easy. I don't know, would he just be looking straight forward or would he be looking up at Sherry? I think he'd be looking up. Angles in rueful, a rueful way, that's it. It's more like him. Let me just finish his chair off. Oh God, this was going on. It's a bit of a leg there. And then Shelley, I think this is a difficult one. She got, I think it's a, it's a reasonable head, but will it come up like her? I did it with quite a fat pen. She's had so many looks that, to be honest with you, I struggle to sometimes to tighten up how she looks if I haven't drawn her for a while. Um, I sometimes just use her appearances in Giant Days now as my kind of benchmark, as like the book of how to draw her, because Max draws her the same every time, and that's as good a benchmark as there is. Fringe is an important part of her character, but I don't, you know, I have quite a few characters who have a fringe. I don't want them all just to look like each other. So I like a split in Shelley's fringe, whereas Charlotte has the really sort of rigid, blunt cut bangs. Whereas with Shelley, you would imagine there's a lot of very expensive layering gone on to uh, create, create some movement. That looks about right. And it's not a huge drawing, you don't need to be super accurate. But I always know when I look at it if I've got the face of the character right or not. I have to look at the lapels of this coat again. So they're quite wide. And her shoulder would be behind it. Um, Summer Telling says, hey, this is cool. I don't think I've heard your voice since Tweet Me Harder. Yeah, I was thinking of Tweet Me Harder the other day. That was a great podcast with uh, David and, and Chris. 
I miss the days of doing fun comedy improvisational podcasts like that. I don't get the opportunity really to do a lot of improvisation now, which is something that I really enjoy. Eleanor says, I've always heard that hard, hands are the hardest thing to draw. How do you find that? Well, I mean, they are hard and they've got a lot of parts. There are some tricks, tricks of the trade, and also the closer in you draw a hand, the harder it is. <laughs> if you draw most of your characters quite remotely, you don't have to be that accurate about fingertips. Um, I've, you know, very. I do like a, a close-in panel sometimes where you can see what's going on, whatever the character is handling. And um, then you do need to get the hands right. And once or twice I've done a cover with some quite close hands on it. And I'm really hard on myself when I do covers because frankly, you know, like there are people who just do covers. And I have done covers, guest covers for people and they probably want me to do it in my style. But I, I struggle to kind of sell that style when doing the sort of composition that a cover would be. And sometimes you'll do something close up and always like, oh, this requires a decent looking hand. And I look at it and I'm like, oh gosh, I, I, you know, I couldn't hand that hand in to teacher. So I've had to try and get better. And again, I've, I've just learned by looking at other artists. Matt Advance says, this is very interesting. I, I was tardy. Do you redraw previous panels as exercise or is there another purpose? I'm just doing it for the stream. I have on occasion done it to um, test things, but to be honest with you, it's usually a sign that I'm losing my mind. Um, better off just doing something new, or often just having a rest or looking at someone else's work. I do sometimes now, instead of just going over old work and redrawing old work, I will find pencils by other artists. Um, often on the Heritage Auction sites, you can find pencils by other artists, and some artists will just put pencils up, especially People like John Byrne. John Byrne just puts pencil art work up every week. Um, presumably he's doing it to sell. Um, and uh, I ink that when I need to warm up or try something different. I ink someone else's. And you always learn something doing that. I didn't. I never learned anything uh, going over my old work again, except that I'm not the same person I was however many years ago. And I can't really always fathom what my reasons were for doing things or what I was trying to do. So no, it's really just for the stream. It's just a bit of fun. And I can talk about what I've learned since doing the original comic. I'm sorry, by the way, there's been no call today for the um, Grange Hill theme tune. But um, unfortunately, I'm now paying PRS for that, based on the number of times I, re I reprised it on the last stream. It's not a perfect Shelley face. It's not bad. It's okay. Sure, quite well. The show of the glasses, you're always sort of fighting the, um, you're always fighting the top line of the glasses because my ink's quite thick. And then you want to get your eyebrows in there. Often I'll put the eyebrow on top of the hair. A sort of ghost eyebrow, if you will, an x ray. I'll show you how I do the backgrounds if you haven't seen it before, and then I'll colour it this one panel in, and then I'll call it quits, and people can go about their weekends, or if your Friday's just started, you can think about how you're going to go about your weekend. So I select everything in between the uh, characters, the foreground elements. I then have a an action that I made, which just fills in that space with white on a separate layer and then I just tuck that white layer behind the inks and then the means I can draw with impunity behind the inks on a separate layer without um, damaging them so see you can just go straight through now there's this computer here that looks uh, suspicious obviously I'm not just going to ink this make it a bit more interesting What year was this? 2007. You'd still have had an optical drive. But I like to put some uh, Zambian features on it. Some slightly iffy kind of uh, stains and things. Actually, this probably wouldn't have helped it. I don't know why I've made. 
made that decision. Address the desk. Again, you just really, because I've used a 3D model, everything's very clean, so you're just trying to scuzz it up a bit, make it look a bit rougher. Yeah, it's the office vertical lines. Oh, what's that white? Oh, I know why that's happening. Clip Studio ignores layers that you've set as draft layers, but I haven't set my lettering layer as a draft, so let's just take that out. Okay, so, I'm quite fast on backgrounds, so I mean, it, it always depends on the actual... God, what are these? They look like software boxes. And you, if you ascribe too much to what the original 3D model was, you end up drawing things you didn't know what it was. I mean, this is some sort of unit. But the nature of it is mysterious. So, a bit of iffy perspective is fine, but breaking the original perspective tends to be to the benefit of the artwork because my normal line work isn't perfect so I don't want everything to look like it came from a machine I think I see what that is, that's the... Do you know what, I'm not going to put his uh, chair adjuster under there because it just looks slightly penile so a lot of stuff that's going on back here, no idea, but I have to make sure this desk is supported in some way, so I'll put some drawers over the other side instead. Extend that perspective there. A bit of, just indicate the floor for the kids. Any little depth cues really make things better. Right. So that's um, Jeff Spencer. That is a blogger. Shelley's style is she's called Blue Avenue, French for blue. B L E U. Surname Avenue, as in the road. And you can find her. I mean, she's just got a blog. She just puts them up. Tells you what her, the ideas for her outfit were, and um, all sorts of uh, playful ensembles that you can uh, get some fashion inspiration from. But no, lookbook's great. I mean, there's an awful lot of people on there who I, I would say look like dangerous LA types. You know, worrying figures. But at the same time, it'll save you a huge amount of work. And people do really do dedicate an awful lot of effort to getting their little looks together. That's how they express themselves. It's quite, I find it quite charming. Okay, so I've just inked that one panel. I'm not going to ink the rest of them. It's pointless. I'll turn the pencils off and I'll just show you how I colour quickly. So I'm going to, I'm going over to the, um, my colour palettes here now. I'm improving at colouring as I go on, um, and Clip Studio, which isn't many people's colouring programme of choice, helps you out a lot with colouring. You're about to see how much it helps you out. Anyway, so I put another layer behind my inks, back, my background inks, and I choose like a kind of, I've got a, there's a palette called Intermediate Colour that lets you pick four colours. Mm -hmm. And then it will show you all the intermediates in between. You can have as many intermediates as you want. You could have a much simpler grid. Or you can have um, oops, you can have 64 by 64. Or I think this is uh, 24 by 24. Um, but it gives you a, a, a variety of harmonious colours. So I'll, I'll pick a sort of very dull office grey. I'll stick that in. I just draw a square. And then... I'm using approximate colour then to pick, which gives you uh, just colours working around that as a basis. So I 
ceiling, I'll do this just slight off white. Um, the windows, I'll give a sort of eerie green glow. They don't need to be too exciting, just to give the indication of some exterior light. Um, this is an A light, so I'll make that a pure white. Not you can really see the difference. It's a bit greater. Um, then I've got this brownie colour that we use for books. I I don't get carried away with colouring. I don't see the point. Like there's a real kind of school of now colourists are as important as any other person working on a comic book. And on comic books they are because comic books have to be utterly, you know, the the, the standards of art that people are held to now are very, very high. It's not a matter of people, you know, just blocking in from a very simple colour basis, you know, the proper artists at work, but at the same time. If you're just making comics on your own, you can't beat yourself up over the colours. If you're doing everything, you can't be there, you know, salting away your tears over the colours. It's not worth it. Um, you know, good enough is good enough. I've worked with some amazing colourists. Um, I was coloured by Whitney Kogar when I did. Uh, fill in issues on Giant Days and Whitney's so good that I was in no way an artist on a par with Max Sarin but when Whitney coloured me it sort of looked almost like I was as good as Max if he went by on a galloping horse and didn't have any glasses on it, it was like wow and you saw how much Whitney was an important part of the look of the book because the colours were amazing. But um, when I'm just colouring myself, I'm not going to be hammering gradients and textures and things onto things. I can't. I don't have time. Um, this week I've drawn five pages and it, it lettered them and, and coloured and inked and I've written another five. And it's, it's hard work. And you can only push yourself so hard when you're a one man or, or woman or whatever you identify as operation. Desk. But yeah, clips you loads of helpful things. You can hold, if you start colouring one colour, I'll just show you, you just hold down and it will only colour in that colour. So I can scribble over everything else, but it will only colour things that are that colour which is very handy. Um, I think that's all my background almost done, so I'll do the foreground as well. I try to pick colours out of my harmonious palette for the foreground as well, and just put a few highlight shades on the character. So Mike's shirt, especially I want characters to sort of be part of the environment, but obviously they can't not stand out. So you, you're looking for slightly more vibrant versions of the background that are going to work in contrast, ideally. Um, and then, oh, I like the idea that Mike's tie will match Shelley's hair. And that makes a sort of, you know, kind of ties the characters together. But some cars aren't going to come out of your palette, some, you know, for sort of skin tones and things. There may not be anything in there that you want to use. I don't have any hard and fast rules. I just find that the, the less colours I employ outside that fairly limited range, the more it looks like somebody coloured it who wasn't me doing grass green and sky blue. So I, it used to be like, like everyone's eyes and hair were exactly the same colour on every page in a comic and every time you went in a certain room it was the same colour and I was really, I held to that for a really really long time but uh, now I'm more interested in the actual comic just looking sort of coherent which is definitely not the case colour wise for a long time it was just a, okay and about as good as I could do and that was it so for example Shelley's outfit that I've picked out, none of those colours are on this page. 
for it in my palette except the coat, but that'll do. Everything else I'll just kind of take things that are about as muddy as um, as muddy as this palette without um, so it doesn't just look too bright. So the sort of patina of the office is on everything. Oh, it's not quite yellow enough. That's what we get. But any more questions? Hey John, do you keep a notebook where you put wee phrases and words and cute sayings as you go along and then integrate into your stories? Shrikey. Ah, uh, no. No, very occasionally if I'm watching an old film, like from the 30s or the 40s, I quite like sort of Preston Sturgis films. There'll be a turn of phrase in it and I'll write it down. But to be honest with you, um, I just talk like this all the time. I'm just sort of nonsense that comes out of my mouth. And uh, as such, um, it's just more of the same old blather. Uh, no, no, says drawing from horseback. Yeah, it's dangerous. I do like to get some red on every page with, with Shelley on. I don't think I think it uh, emphasises the fact that she spells danger. Okay, so what we've got left. Right, I'm, I'm almost done, so if you've got any final questions, stick them in the chat. Otherwise, you'll never get to answer them. Ever. Well, I mean, you, you might. You might get an answer. Okay, let me skin tone. Ugh, sallow. Ugh, God. doesn't look well. That's what I can. So, another useful Clip Studio tool is um, let's use lasso areas and kind of catch all of the white, or when you catch any colour. So sometimes the paint bucket can be hard to hit individual pixels, sometimes like a pixel will be, you can see that, just like two pixels, one pixel. And it's not really going to show up in print, but it might. And you know it's there. So with the colour lasso, I can just go like that, and it catches the pixels with that colour. And I mean, if you're short on time, and you just try to catch single pixels like that, you could just fill them all in with black and probably nobody would notice. And Shelly's eyes are green. I do usually keep the same colour for their eyes. She has not bright green, it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, R.A. Bidet, will we see the return of the boy and Aaron anytime soon? No. No, I don't think I'm, there's going to be any more stories with the boy and Aaron anytime soon. I think I've pretty much said everything I've got to say about them for the time being. What advice do you have for someone who wants to get into YouTube live streaming? I don't have any advice. I don't think I'm very successful as a YouTube live streamer. I think this might only be the third time I've ever done it. I'm sorry that Aaron and the boy aren't in the comic anymore. I just, literally, I gave them more stories than I should have done. I When you start to see me tie characters up in weird plot knots, plot knots, means I'd run out of ideas and it, it wasn't feeling human and natural anymore. I don't really have anything else left to say with some of these characters, unfortunately. I don't really know why I've always had more stuff to say with Shelley, but I think she just kind of, she's like the avatar of a certain sort of storytelling that I like doing. Um, so, so no more than that. And she fits most of the sort of stories I would try to write. Poor old Erin and uh, the boy. I'm not desperate to do more tackle for tales. I think I've told their story from every angle now. I haven't really got much more to give it. I'd rather do more steeple and things like that. Where the, the, the turf is new. Mm. This isn't too bad. Perhaps. Something about her nose is annoying me. I think it just perhaps it needs a slightly thicker line on the bottom. Work. Yeah, 
And again, no one's going to notice that, but I know. Okay, better, better. I always like to get a highlight on Shelley's hair as well, indicating, you know, vitality. Right. Well, I'm not obviously I'm not going to do the rest of the panels. That would be preposterous and unnecessary. But I'll turn them all back on so we can look at them side by side. So. So. Oh. Hang on. Where's Shelley? There she is. Right. There you go. You can see what. You can see what's changed. You can see what's changed in in how many years it is. 14 years, 13 years, 14 years. Uh, but really, you're still solving the same problems, you just get better at solving them. You just find new ways to solve them. Okay, I'm just going to read the final comments. And then I'm going to head out and hopefully remember to turn the sound off so you don't hear me vacuuming and calling my bookie, telling him I'm going to get him the money. Drink Mark Ellaby's life force like a psychic vampire. Well, I think that might, I think that actually might be working in the opposite direction. Mark's, you know, he just, he, he takes my energy, turns it into Chloe Noon in comics. Uh, Summer Towing says, that's okay, I like seeing you characters too, thank goodness. Thank you, Summer, for your forgiveness of my, of my recalcitrance. Don't worry, Mark. You're, I, I realise that you're crying, but that's because you're an emo. You were born that way, like Lady Gaga. And Calman says, 14 years, that's crazy. Well, do you know what? Let's hope we're all still here in 14 years, having a good time together, eh? I, I hope so. I, I'm very, very pleased that you you've been hanging around for that long and I'm, I'm pleased that I've been able to enjoy doing this for that, that long as well. Ian, will I make this stream permanent? Ian, do you mean will I save it for YouTube? So I think this one was good enough that I can do unless it ends with me calling my bookie or, you know, the, um, the French Knot Society or something. Uh, I see no reason to delete this one. Oh, I think I'll save it. But on that note, I, I call it quits. I say goodbye. Thank you all very much for popping by. And I'll do another one at some point when, when, I've, when I've got a quiet afternoon like today. So have a good weekend. Cheerio.